What a fantastic way to check your resin settings. Biff, pow, zap, clunk, clunk, ouchie. Hey guys, I need to start by eating humble pie. This concept, which you will come to know as the cones of calibration, was first made known to me by its creators, Table Flip Foundry, not long after it was released. And like many new concepts, it was largely ignored, even by me. Truthfully, I shrugged it off as a wacky and pointless idea. But having been prompted by several people to try it recently, I've got to admit, I was wrong. This is genuinely a clever idea. So what's it for? Well, when you buy a new resin printer, or even a new resin, you need to add settings to your slicer to get that ideal print. You can try to find these settings by searching on the internet, but as no two machines are the same, it's better to calibrate the resin settings yourself. Now, a couple of weeks back, I received the Uniformation GK2 printer to review. I had some Anycubic Craftsman Grey resin that I wanted to use, and, of course, I knew there was no way the correct settings would be available for me back then. So I did what I've told you guys to do before. I printed a range of exposure tests. Personally, I like the one provided freely by Frozen, but there are others out there. I made my best guesses based on my prints, and the rest is history. The problem with this method of calibration is that a lot of it is subjective. The differences between exposure prints are often so subtle that it really can be a matter of guessing which is best. So after that review, I decided to test the cones of calibration and see if that would be an easier method. It's a simple print, freely available from the creators, and I'll place a link in the description for you. It takes about 40 minutes or so to typically print, and once done, you simply inspect it. There's a success side and a failure side to the print. If the settings you use are correct, the success side should look like this. 10 cones, perfectly printed, meeting in the middle. Again, if your settings are correct, the reverse failure side should show just five reasonably formed cones. Sounds too good to be true, right? Well, I was already happy with my print results. I'd guesstimated a setting of 1.7 seconds. So I printed the cone test using those settings, and sure enough, the first print was a complete success. 10 cones on one side, five on the other. So, did the cone test really work? Or were we being deceived by the dark forces of chaos? What would have happened if I'd have printed at 1.6 or 1.8 seconds? I set out to thwart injustice by printing at 1.6 and 1.8 just to check things through. Sure enough, imperfection was apparent. Varying just 0.1 seconds either way did not produce ideal prints. At 1.6 on the failure side, there's very little to see. On the success side, it's clear that not all of the cones are formed properly, suggesting that it's underexposed and a little more time is needed, which of course we know to be true. On the 1.8 second print, the success side shows 10 well-formed cones, as we'd expect. But the reverse side shows the beginning of more cones, an indication that the print was overexposed, which again, we know to be true. Verily, such an esteemed work of magic could only be the creation of a goodly mage. This means you can use the cones of calibration to dial in your ideal exposure setting. If the cones on your success side are not fully formed, then you need to increase your exposure time. If more cones begin to spawn on the failure side, then tis the work of perverse chaotic demons, and you'll need to reduce exposure time. The real question is, 
Should you dial in your resin using the cones? Is this the perfect method? For me, I would have to say no. I still maintain that the best method to dial in the perfect exposure settings is that which I've previously described in another video. So I won't repeat myself now. But put very simply, these take about 10 minutes to print. These take about 40 minutes to print. That means I can produce four of these for every one of these. And that could very easily be enough, especially as your experience grows. However, I think it's important that I clarify a few things about this earlier video. These prints here are a little curly, and that's because I UV cured them. I did that because I knew that I was going to be handling them a lot for the video. You do not need to UV cure calibration prints, but you do need to clean them so that you can see the detail. For me, I find the best method is the ultrasonic cleaner, as this does a brilliant job of cleaning whilst leaving the fine detail in place. Ordinary wash and cure stations can damage the fine detail, though you can try things like clamping the prints to something heavy or using a net or what have you. Once these are cleaned but not cured, you can very quickly identify which way you should adjust your exposure something that the cones could take a day of printing to achieve. It actually takes a little less resin to print one of these than one of these, but unfortunately printing takes too long and that will drive all but the most patient of us to distraction. But as I said earlier on, when you're very close, it really does become subjective. You could easily guess incorrectly and spoil what would have been otherwise a perfect setup. Well, here's where you can use the cones. This is an ideal time to put your guesstimations to the test. If you're a little bit wrong, then there's no need to print another as the cones will tell you which way to go. So yes, the cones of calibration are genius and do have their place. If you're the very patient sort, then take a day or two of printing nothing but these. But if, like me, you want to get on with printing the good stuff, then use the standard exposure test prints and narrow in very quickly. Then, when you're close, finish off with the cones of calibration and check your guesstimations. One word of caution though. Sometimes, Table Flip Foundry tell us, you'll get an anomaly. I haven't experienced this personally, but it's their baby, so they should know. And another thing, don't go chasing this down a rabbit hole. Don't go mad repeating the test with settings like 1.69 or 1.71, when 1.7 will do. As long as the test results are pretty good, you won't see a difference. So. My hearty congratulations to Table Flip Foundry for creating this excellent free resource for the benefit of the printing community. It's a worthy tool to keep in your printing arsenal. And that's it for this video, guys. Take care and thanks for watching.